to hold on to the fun. Yeah, yeah. When the sour bits up in my head, where I was spending my time in the sugar gold, where the warmth beat the cold. <laughs> Last moments, I said to Chaz, you know what, bro, we've got nothing to lose. Let's sell everything we've got here, including like our electric guitars. Let's take our acoustic guitars, let's go to Cape Town, let's get jobs there instead of in odd places around the world, because we both have always wanted to come to Cape Town. And then what we'll do is we'll just play shows on the odd weekend, you know, just for fun. Just you and me, like we write the songs in the lounge. We just write some tracks and go and play them and have a good time. For the first two weeks, we just drove around the peninsula because yeah. we knew nothing about Cape Town. We just looked for venues that seemed like they would have live events or they would like live music, you know. And we found, I mean, we had three pages full, you know. And um, we, were, the two places where we drove around the peninsula a couple of times, the two places that we said we have to do while we're down here is Barraza in Camps Bay yeah. and Kirsten Bosch Gardens, yeah. which. Thank the Lord we got to do both, which was amazing. Yeah. Was we eventually when we got we phoned guys and they said, okay, yo, we do have music here or whatever. We said, great, can we come around and see you? And every place we went and we spoke to them. I mean, you, we didn't surprisingly we didn't even bring our guitars to you. No, you didn't at all. Because most of the other venues we actually went in with like two guitars and just yeah. sat down and said, yeah, we The two of you was was quite dynamic. In that the first time you guys ever came to me for to start playing at the armchair. He walked in the door and we had a conversation. And it was just through that conversation that I immediately gave you a whole lot of, you know, like I think it was a run on Wednesdays or something like that. And yeah. I never ever do that with other bands. Yeah. So. The armchair call, just to mention, was, yeah. was our favorite place in Cape Town to jam at. We enjoyed it so much here. And yes. like I said it to you before, it was yeah. because it was treated like a theater and the people came in and they listened to the music. Yeah. I mean, they got it just as involved as anywhere else. But the other places, it's very much a bar. That's it's pretty much the place to find it, yeah. So people came here to listen to the music, or whoever they did see her, they listened. We were, we were able to grow into ourselves. The audience in Cape Town gave us so much, like so much confidence and installed so much belief within ourselves that like it just it just grew and grew and grew and we felt like we could do anything. We could do anything. pretty much been here for six years and we've never really had, besides a few bootleg recordings, which no one really knows about. <laughs> <laughs> we had, uh, we'd never kept a record of what we'd done here, so we, we could never leave here after six years and show anyone what we'd done. And um, we decided in the last month before we sold the place to put something down. And I remember mentioning to you there were a few options we had because we put together quite a nice month. And we decided on you guys because it pretty much encapsulated what we intended the place to be right from the beginning. We thought that if we filmed that, that would be the most accurate re representation of what our six years at the armchair had been. Yeah. It was good times, yeah. I mean, I think every, yeah. every, every um, event that we've gotten involved with, we've always Highlight. pushed the limit for ourselves. Yeah. We've yeah. always come away from it going, yes, there's so much we learned and we can do better next time. Yeah. Uh, for, you, for you guys, it felt like, like I don't know, from my side, like giving, giving something, something, giving the audience something extra special. Right. You really get the the feeling like everybody connected on a personal level, like it stems so much deeper than just like being entertained. There's so much, yeah. Something happened that night. Something happened for us and for them, and everyone left better for it. But every single gig we did was just a complete highlight. Yeah. And like, there wasn't one gig where we walked away going, "Oh, was it?" Every single gig just was just you got bigger. Yeah. And when I met 
challenge. He was very, very inter introverted and uh, and and uh, almost like kind of just closed in there, afraid like of the world. He never, even <laughs> he never even would say a word to anyone. No, no, he was, he, he was, and, and I used to play some serious jokes on this guy to loosen him up because, I mean, like Frank's, you know, because he needed to be loosened up, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and I remember the, the one day I said to him, Chaz, one thing is undeniable, you're brilliant. You're really, really good on your guitar. That is undeniable, okay? Can we question that? No, 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 we can't question that. Okay, I will buy you a McDonald's, number one, you know that was his perfect favorite, number one, if at our next show you get down on your knees when you're playing your lead in Witch's Pantry, which was just like, because we used to be this rock band. <laughs> and I said, when you get down, get down on your knees. And he got down on his knees, and the crowd went so ballistic, and Chaz's face was in, Oh, oh. <laughs> and he was like, well, that's, that's, like that's, that's real that. easy. Like, dude, like, because I mean, you know, the funny thing is, you know, people say, they, they ask me, like, it must be so difficult to, for you, because Chaz is in the music that you're listening to all the time and playing on a weekly basis. He's in photographs everywhere in the yeah. newspaper. So you constantly must be thinking about it. Yeah. And I said, you're right, I am constantly thinking yeah. about it, but it's the weirdest thing because whenever I think about Chaz, even though sometimes I want to just look at a picture and just like mourn him, like I just want to sob, you know, uh. I don't. I look at a picture and I think about some funny story that happened years back and I, and I have a good laugh about it and I just feel like he's there laughing with me, you know. I've never been more terrified on stage than with Chaz jumping. <laughs> he, just, he would just become like this pogo stick. We should guitar. have seen him 10 years ago. <laughs> you know, when I have a moment when I'm not singing, I lean back into the guitar and I'm just strumming away. And Chaz is like spinning. Like his, his, his cord, I remember, was actually like winding up his leg. And he was just spinning and his hair was just going like this. And he was still hitting all his notes yeah. perfectly. Yeah. And he I was thought very myself, good at doing that. I just thought, like, yes! Like a boy, is, he's going mad. I, th I yeah. thought he was going to fall over. Luckily, he didn't. <laughs> that amazed me about Shaz was that <laughs> something I remember walking up to him after one gig and going, Yo, bro, you really amazed me that gig because the amount of acrobatics that you did. And that he would still, still play your it line. accurately. Like, yeah. Absolutely yeah. accurately. I was like, wow. Yeah. But my, my, one of the funniest memories I think I've, I have of was, was we were playing, we were playing a gig, I can't remember where it was, but I remember we were jamming it out, and Chazzy comes over to me, and he's like, he's sweating, and he's just, you know, he's, you know, remember what Chaz like, he'd be in the moment, and he's like, his guitar's going, and he comes over to me with this like, really intense face, he's like, hey man, can I, can I jump off your drum? And I'm, I'm like, jamming away, I'm like, um, and I'm just like, fuck, this crowd's going mad. Go for it. He like climbs onto my bass drum, just does this massive leap up in the air with his guitar, like still strumming. I wasn't in that version. But it was also like you could see, like like it was just a very obvious uh, thing. Like I mean, when you know, especially you know, you and Chaz kind of on stage, you could see like the energy that was going into the music, and you could see that it was coming from a a good place, and you could see that it was like you guys were like honest about your music. I don't think he wants to be remembered with like a with like a knot a knot in your stomach. Yeah. He wants to be remembered with like a laugh. He wants he wants to know that every time you think of him you think, ah oh, it's good time. Good time. Yeah. Yeah.